Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and I'm going to show you the easiest, well, what do you want to call it? Cold frame, little mini greenhouse that you can put together. I liked it so much, I made two. These are simple totes. They're 18 gallon totes. You can get them for like six, seven dollars. Check the stores. They come with a lid, and you'll want the lid. Now what I do here, and I'll show you in detail how I filled it, is I put some soil in them. Let's take the lid off, and we'll explain the lid in a minute. I do put soil in them, and I do use potting soil, but I do actually put some leaves if I've got leaves, or paper, shredded paper, toilet paper rolls on the bottom. Just so I have some microbes, and maybe I can throw some earthworms in there. The hint is, you don't want to get roly-polies in there, because what I'm doing, let me show you the other one. is I'm starting my seeds here. I'm actually starting my seeds in here. I did it last year. For this, I would use a container that's on the light colors. This is a light, they call it scuba green. It's kind of a limey color. This has worked fantastic. I would go with anything light. Now last year, because I had so many seeds and so many things growing, I had to take everything out. And you'll see here how I did. And the reason I had to take the soil out, well, I had seeds that I would not even know what it was. I had hibiscus going in there, roselle, red. I had different things growing and it would have kind of mixed in with what I'm doing. So I dumped it out and used that soil and there could have been maybe some roly polies that managed to get in there by moving plants around. So I started fresh and now this is set up. Now I've got different types of peppers growing in paper cups. I've got them growing in my tool. I've got, this is beautiful Black Beauty zucchini. Here's another zucchini. This is yellow squash. See, I actually put a little cardboard there with straight neck yellow squash. I've got some other seeds planted in here. And I sometimes stick things in here if I'm doing cuttings. This has been fantastic. The reason I love it is it's already outside. Now, let me step back so you can see this. Last year, I didn't have a gazebo, and it still worked fine. We just set this up a couple weeks ago, if that. So you could put it in a sunny or shady location. Now, if you're, of course... 90 degrees then I would definitely find a shadier location but this has been fantastic and you can use this all year now why do I put soil if I'm growing in pots the soil keeps the temperature perfect all right the soil is there just to hold the temperature if it was just a plastic container or a glass container it would fluctuate too much the temperature by having just nothing there. But the soil, Mother Nature's soil, keeps the temperature just the way the plants are gonna grow. So I grow them like this, and here's the thing. I don't have to harden them off and then bring them outside every day, you know, a couple hours here, a few hours there until they're used to the weather. They're already used to the weather. The only reason I made a top and that's why you'll need to top is I put some tool there. You can staple this on. You can look at my old videos, how I've done it. You could staple it. You could use paper fastener, zip ties. You could even just drape it on if you wanted to, whatever way. But the tool is to keep the birds out. You'll have birds go in there because they love new seedlings. This keeps everything out, keeps insects out. Nothing will bother it. And it's already outside. This has been a win-win and perfect. Like I said, I set up a second one this year because I'm going to keep seeds going all through the year, even in the summer and fall, and I'll do it here. This one I just set up, and now I've got a six-pack in here. I'm going to put some seeds in here, and when it's ready, I have them already outside. As I'm working in the garden, I go, gee, i got a spot for something. I can run over here and get my plants. So let me show you how I set it up and then you can decide if this will work for you. And it's up and off the ground so you don't have to bend. So last year I used this tote as a cold frame and I grew a lot of seeds and a lot of plants in there. Some of them were in their own containers and some of them were directly in here. The issue is right now is we have over the air a lot of sow bugs. Well, they're perfectly fine to break down your soil, but the issue is they will also eat your seedlings. So I'm going to dump all this out and use it, use it in another tote, because that is the most wonderful soil, because there was all kinds of compost in here. But I'm gonna start with fresh potting soil, so I don't have any sow bugs or anything that's gonna eat my seedlings. 
Now, being this is being set up for a cold frame, you would think I just have to put potting soil in here, but I actually can put other things in here as long as I don't see any roly poly. I have collected some dry stuff from around the garden. It's been just sitting in a bucket, and there's really no insects in here that I can see. And the insects I'm looking for are roly polies because that is what's going to eat my baby plant. I can put some of this in here. Now if I see any roly polies, I can simply remove them as well. Or I can make a little trap, which is something that's covered on top of the soil. They'll come underneath. I can take them out. Even got a branch and some greens. Now I'm not going to fill this to the top. This is strictly for growing seedlings right now. But I still want to save on soil. I can toss in earthworms. That would be great too. Just no roly polies. I think that's good. And we'll top this with soil. Now I can come back, I can plant directly in there, or I can put pots in there. The leaves that will be breaking down will create a tiny bit of warmth, and then I can have pots in there, and I can cover the top with a tool covering. I hope I gave you some ideas on how to set this up in your own yard. You could do it on a patio or a balcony. You only need one just for your seeds. It works perfectly. As you move things out, you can move things in, and I still water the soil because I want that soil to be alive. If you find any earthworms, pick up a flower pot. You find some earthworms, go ahead and drop them in on the soil. Make sure you've got a few leaves in there, even from the seedlings you're growing. If you've got some seedling leaves that get brown, pinch them off and drop them in there. Because what happens is this becomes the food for your earthworms. And keep in mind, when you put potting soil into anything, there's nothing for the earthworms to feed on. Now, if you've got earthworms there, they're gonna to gravitate to that. Remember, you keep that soil damp, so you still wanna water that soil, and you'll have earthworms going, so you kinda of have like a worm farm and your seeds growing in the same spot, and they will multiply right there. If you don't have any leaves in there, the earthworms will leave. Whether they go through the holes on the bottom, make sure you have drain holes, or they crawl out at night when you're not looking. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy gardening, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.